Welcome again to Winning Ways. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for that that I'm about to share in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to share about taking risk. Risk, the possibility of incurring a loss, the possibility of a misfortune, the chance that expectations are not met or that the result of actions differ from anticipated. That is what a risk is. Most people are risk averse. They are too scared of losing what they have, so they do nothing. What they do not realize is the bigger risk. The, 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 what they do not realize is that the bigger risk is doing nothing. When you do nothing, then failure is certain. Assuming you have an idea to start a venture, or you have an idea to start doing something that has just dropped in your spirit if after analyzing the risk you become too cautious and you do nothing the choice that you have actually made by doing nothing is a choice of failure now i'm not advocating that once you have an idea you must execute even when the risk is so glaring and is almost certain that it is unworkable however most things can be fine-tuned until the risk is acceptable. It is called risk mitigation or taking calculated risk. I read a book a while ago and the author of the book, I won't be able to mention in him here, said that there are three yardsticks in taking any decision for him. That he will first of all ask himself, what is the normal thing that will happen if it works? What is the best thing that will happen if it works? What is the worst thing that will happen if it fails? He said once he can answer the three questions and he can live with the consequences of the third question, that is, what will happen if it fails, he knows it is time to do it. This individual has done so many things and succeeded the most. The truth is that there is a risk in everything in life that we do. The fact that you woke up this morning and you left your house, there was risk associated to it. Everything in life. As Christians, we go a step further and we pray so that we don't just minimize and mitigate risk, but we count on our Father. We count on the Holy Spirit to, prov to provide us with divine providence so that our minds are fine-tuned to take the best and the right decisions. But remember, me advocating that we take risk, I'm not saying taking risk blindly. For example, before I drive out in the morning, I check to be ensure that my car is okay. But I will not start driving my car if my brakes are bad. That becomes taking reckless risk. The chances are sometimes you get into a venture that you know that is not going to work and you are praying in tongues and hoping that it will change. It's the same thing as driving a car that has no brake and you are praying in tongues hoping that it will stop. Why did you start? Some end up with analysis paralysis. What is analysis paralysis? When you analyze it so much that you become overcome with fear and you do nothing. In my experience, life is about taking risk, albeit calculated risk. However, no matter how calculated it could be, it can, go, it can still go wrong. Hence, the risk has crystallized. A smart individual will have a ready plan for that situation. That is, if the risk crystallizes, what do I do? If it goes wrong, what do I do? I always ensure I have an answer to that question before doing it. I once took a job in an organization. And two days after joining the organization, the organization the business unit was closed down. But I've taken some measures in my contract that if for any reason the organization was going to close down, I'll be moved to another part of the business at the same level. So I crystal the risk crystallized and I pulled on my lever. They moved me to another country, but all things work together for my good. And it became a testimony. In concluding, taking risk is a winning way. If you don't take risk, you are in a do-nothing state, which is a guaranteed failure. However, make sure that you take calculated risk and know what to do if it goes wrong. Also, ensure that you are led of the Spirit of God in taking those directions, which is what I called the fourth question, which is, what is the Spirit of God saying to me about this decision? This is a winning way. I can, as I always say, think win.